Welcome back, and today we're going to talk about PowerShell jobs. Now hopefully you're going to be able to follow along with what I'm doing here, which is to invoke a script against my local machine in this case, and do it as a job. So as you can see, I get a quick output with the name of the job, the query that's running, and the various other details that are related. And if I do a get job, I can see the status of the job, in this case now completed. Now what we can do with completed jobs is we can also see whether they have data. So in this case we see data is true. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just quickly receive the job. So in this case I will receive the output for the job ID and we can see there's the output from the command that I ran earlier. So I have the process. Now I can try to get the job ID again and you'll see that I don't get any and I'm using the name but this doesn't change the fact and if I do a quick get job you'll see that the data has now say change status to false that's because you can only get it once if you don't tell it to keep it so if I do the job again and you can see that I have data once more and I'm going to retrieve that data once more but in this time I'm going to use the keep flag. So in this case the switch which is the keep will keep that data available rather than removing it after I've seen it. And now once more I'm just going to go get the, the job to show it's still there. Now I'm going to try it without the keep to prove that the data again disappears once that is done. And it doesn't matter if I use the ID or the name as the variable. So that's how you can retrieve data from a job or keep it in the job depending on your requirements at the time. Now let's try something a teensy weensy bit more complicated. Now I can delete jobs by using the remove job and then telling it either the name or the ID as my variable. In this case job 4. And I'm going to show that the job 4 has now disappeared. Now this is one of several ways that you could get rid of jobs. Another one is you can simply close the PowerShell session and that would disappear. Now if you were running the job remotely it would remain there until the PowerShell um, has been killed on that remote machine. So you should be able to still retrieve jobs from that remote machine. But let's do something a little bit more complicated here. So now we have a script that is going to get a date time, which is one minute from now. It's going to start a job and it's going to start a hundred of them. Or in this case, just 20. Because if I was to start a hundred, I would actually run out of RAM. So then there's something to consider. Also note that the increment here is going up with a job ID of 2, 4, 6, 10, etc. So it goes up to 40 in this case. And we're running that same command against all of them. So you can see we have a running status, we have a data. This would work potentially very well where you've got a scenario of checking 20, 30 machines and then consolidating the data afterwards. So in this case, since they're all running locally, uh, I'm going to have a little bit of a bottleneck on my machine. So I'm going to keep refreshing it just to see how it's going periodically. Whilst if this was running remotely over 20 machines, I might get an answer very quickly as each job would complete very very soon. So this is something that's more of a bottleneck around my VM than it is a reflection of reality. Now in a real world scenario you might be using this as a way of completing 2030 tasks on 2030 different machines simultaneously. That can be anything from getting variables like is it performing CPU wise or memory and disk space down to I've got a deployment script and here's what I've deployed and I've done it to 20 machines at the same time. Very effective in a reality. So how you use jobs is a little bit down to you and they're a great uh, addition to the tool that you already have in PowerShell. Now that's it for today's video tutorial on jobs. Uh, if you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. If you're looking to get more content of this type, uh, please hit the subscribe. 
and uh, hopefully I'll see you all again in the next video.